So that leads you to think, if this is so risky, why would someone undergo this procedure? Primarily, it's because it is a large, um, it's a way to remove a large volume of fluid. It is often only used for patients that are hemodynamically unstable. Let me rephrase that. This is the best modality of dialysis used to treat hemodynamically unstable patients. It's also used to treat patients that are undergoing multi-organ dysfunction or failure. And it's also used to treat patients that have comorbidities or complications that preclude the use of other forms of hemodialysis. I talked about the reasons why you would not choose hemodialysis in one of the other videos. So I'd refer you back to that to learn more about those uh, comorbidities and complications and why you would choose not to do intermittent hemodialysis. The reason that you would choose not to do CRRT is if you cannot gain access. So if you don't have a way to place a central access, meaning in the internal jugular or the subclavian or the femoral um, uh, venous system, then you won't be able to perform the CRRT. This is not a modality that's performed using AV fistulas or AV grafts. You would also not choose CRRT if the patient doesn't meet the criteria. Each institution will determine what the criteria are, but you want to make sure that your patient um, is going to be able to tolerate undergoing such an extreme treatment or therapy. You also want to not choose CRRT if the treatment outcomes need to be reached very quickly because CRRT is a slow and gentle process that removes fluid in large, large quantities over a longer period of time. So this is not a quick fix. Indications that you might want to choose, we'll go back to indications a little bit, you might want to use this in cases of oliguria or anuria. Remember those terms. In situations of hyperkalemia or severe acidosis, meaning a pH of probably around 7.1 is certainly something to consider CRRT for. If a patient has azotemia or a urea greater than 30, um, if they have significant organ edema such as lung or heart overload, if they have uremic encephalopathy or uremic pericarditis, you would certainly want to consider CRRT. If your patient has severe sodium deficits or um, too much sodium, then this is certainly a reason to consider CRRT. If your patient is hyperthermic, you could use this as a method to treat that though I would say that is very extreme and there are certainly better methods to treat hyperthermia. I would recommend this type of therapy to treat drug overdoses that are able to be dialyzed out. We've covered those types of poisons and toxins and overdoses in a previous video. As you can imagine, CRRT requires a, a phenomenal amount of nursing management and care of those patients. In general, you can plan that you need to do the nursing process, assessment, diagnosis, planning, intervention, and evaluation. We we'll talk a little bit about the assessment piece that goes along with patients that are undergoing hemodialysis, whether it's CRRT or of any type. We'll not revisit those. I encourage you to revisit that video when we talk about that in the intermittent hemodialysis video. Primarily, you want to be certain whenever a patient is undergoing CRRT that you are staying on top of their vital signs. Usually this requires vital signs to be taken every 15 minutes or more frequently if they are undergoing large shifts in fluid. Usually it's a nursing decision how much fluid to remove per hour based on the patient's previous hourly intake and based on their current output. Output is considered anything that the patient loses from their body. That means whether that be urine or liquid stool or nasogastric drainage or if you remove a significant volume of uh, tube feeding residual that is a volume that's lost. Even though it might not be intravascular, it is considered output. 
So anything that you would consider output from the body would need to be considered whenever you're making adjustments for dialysis patients. So it's very important whenever you're planning that you communicate and delegate appropriately to non-licensed personnel to be sure to monitor the um, intake and output accordingly. You want to make sure that you're assessing the dialysis site for signs and symptoms of infection or bleeding. You want to make sure that they're still having good circulation past the point of the access. So if you have a patient that's on a, um, that has an AV graft or a fistula, fistula, you want to be certain to check for peripheral pulses, peripheral circulation such as capillary refill, the temperature of the extremities. If your patient has a central access, then you want to make sure that you're observing the site for signs of infection, making sure that there's no leaking or bleeding around the insertion site. You also want to make sure that the catheter is in the same location or the link that the physician placed it. You don't want the catheter migrating further into the body or being pulled further out of the body. The way you know that is by making sure to assess the line placement at the beginning of your shift. Most of the central lines that you use for hemodialysis, the dialysis catheters, will be documented as being placed at a certain number of millimeters or a certain number of centimeters and those are marked on the line itself. Almost always those lines are sutured in place in more than one spot to prevent the uh, accidental removal of those uh, lines. You want to make sure that when you're assessing your patient that you're monitoring their level of consciousness. Oftentimes patients undergoing CRRT will be sedated. So you need to make sure that you're comparing their baseline of sedation to any changes or adjustments that you make as you're progressing through the therapy. It's very important that you monitor and assess the patient's lab values, both during the uh, therapy and then once the therapy is discontinued, you need to continue to monitor those lab values to be sure that your patient's not trending back towards uh, the need for some sort of dialysis. It's important for you to understand the medication administration process during a, a patient that's, or for a patient that's undergoing CRRT. Since it's a continuous modality or a continuous therapy, you won't stop this medication to administer IV antibiotics or to administer medications uh, through a feeding tube or enteral uh, feeding access of some sort. You would continue to give these medications even though they may be dialyzable, you still want to continue to give these medications on the routine schedule. The patient will continue to get some of those benefits. The pharmacist or the physician will have made adjustments to dosing based on the fact that these patients are undergoing CRRT. It's important when you're taking care of any type of dialysis patient that you monitor their weight. This is also important when measuring or taking care of a patient that's undergoing CRRT. These patients will usually have daily weights ordered, sometimes more frequently depending on the physician's preference. Patient education regarding CRRT is difficult to do since most of these patients are in the intensive care and they are um, sometimes sedated while they're getting this procedure. I have performed CRRT on patients that were awake and alert and it was easy to explain to them the process of the treatment that they were undergoing as long as you're knowledgeable about the process and are able to convey that information to them. That is something that you learn with experience and time and then also this takes special training to perform so it's not something that you'll do first day after graduation but it is something that you'll do within the first year if you work as an ICU nurse in a unit that performs these procedures. It's important for you to consider the nursing diagnosis associated with hemodialysis patients. I highly encourage you to take a look at the different types of di di nursing diagnosis that would apply to patients undergoing long-term dialysis, but primarily I want you to focus on patients that are undergoing uh, acute dialysis or dialysis in a, an acute care setting. 
So I would like for you to focus on short-term nursing diagnosis, things that you can handle immediately, such as uh, patient education is a short-term goal or short-term nursing diagnosis that you can, um, you can intervene with immediately. Coping would be more of a long-term uh, nursing diagnosis. So you want to think in, in terms of those, uh, you want to think it along those lines in terms for this class. You want to make sure that you're including your patient's family in your education and plan and care. You want to uh, clump your care and coordinate your care so that you're having uh, the least amount of disturbance to your patient as possible and as the least amount of disturbance to your treatment. If your patient needs to travel to radiology, that will require you to disconnect your patient from the CRRT and that requires a special procedure such as giving a, uh, you may have to give an anticoagulant through the machine to keep it from clotting while you're downstairs with your patient um, and they're off the therapy. Um, it's important for you to continue to monitor the patient for uh, further complications such as bleeding. I've mentioned the importance of monitoring their labs and their electrolytes uh, for imbalances. These patients will also have their acid base uh, balances checked through ABGs frequently. Uh, you'll need to monitor your patient for hypothermia to be sure that you aren't cooling them down too much. Um, you'll be wanting to measure their white blood cells in addition to their temperature to monitor for signs of infection. In addition to looking at their access site to monitor for signs of infection. Um, we've talked about the strict monitoring of intake and output. And that gives you feedback or uh, an evaluation method to determine if your treatment has been effective. Your patient's weight will indicate how much fluid that you've removed. Your balance at the end of every hour as the CRT is managed hourly um, and fluid adjustments are, you'll take off more fluid based on the patient's intake versus uh, taking off less fluid if they've had more output. So those decisions are made hourly by the nurses based on the physician's orders. So it's important for you to keep up with evaluating your treatment um, as you go along, making sure you're looking at those lab values, assessing your patient, monitoring their telemetry, monitoring their uh, response to any sort of ventilatory support that they may have, and then communicating with your physician or mid-level provider to let them know how the treatment's going and to see if they need to make any adjustments based on the patient's condition. I look forward to seeing you soon and I hope this has helped answer some questions related to CRRT. Talk to you later.